30 work tool. This is my company. I'm an off-duty hero operator. This is my company. Okay. Yeah, I do for no details. Yeah. So you like me, you're impersonating a police officer. What is up guys, I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there, you're very welcome to another video here on the General Watch, thank you very much for joining me. Most of you guys have probably heard of Jeremy DeWitt who was a serial police impersonator out of Florida. He ran a funeral escort service but they spent most of their time acting like a de facto highway patrol. And before you guys think this is yet another Florida man video, on the contrary, it's a Georgia man video. Yes it would seem that the Florida man influence has crept across the border into Georgia. More specifically, a place called Eckwart in Georgia where we have another police impersonator. And like Mr. DeWitt, this guy has his own escort service also. Eckwart's chief of police spotted this guy activating his lights to get around some traffic and decided to get one of his officers in a marked vehicle to pull him over. So let's take a look at what happened. 4 6 ready. I'll be 1035 with that vehicle. I'm going to be pulling into Julie's Boutique right here off of Main Street. Hey partner. Hi. Hey, I'm Officer Park with Aqua Police Department. How are you? Uh, the only reason why I'm pulling you over, uh, I guess y'all were, well, that's my chief of police right there. He saw y'all go around traffic. He was trying to figure out who, who y'all are with or what was going on. Okay. So he called out on the radio and asked for a Martin unit. That's why I got you pulled over. That's fine. So um, I'll, I'll just let him come up if he want. Okay. I want to ask who y'all work for, Georgia Metropolitan? Uh, yeah, I work, I'm off to a hero operator. Oh, off duty yeah. hero operator? How you doing, Chief? Hey, I was I'm off duty operator. I just work in off real detail. That's my ID. Uh -huh. That's my badge. Yeah, I just work in a friend of detail. I went to get my car checked up because you can see all the lights on. Why is the car registered to an individual? That's mine. This is my doctor. So what are you doing with all these red lights? Sorry? Why all these emergency lights? Yes. And did I see you using emergency lights to pull out into traffic on Lake Eckworth Drive? Oh, no, because I couldn't, I couldn't get to the chief. You know this? That's a standstill. So I flashed the lights hoping to see me that I was trying to get in the line. Who do you work for? This is my company. I'm an off-duty hero operator. This is my company. So the man here is saying that he's an off-duty hero operator, and that stands for Highway Emergency Response Operators. The program is a freeway service patrol operated in Atlanta by the Georgia Department of Transportation and forms part of their Office of Traffic Operations. Its primary purpose is to minimize traffic congestion by clearing wrecked or disabled vehicles from travel lanes and providing traffic control at incident scenes. As a secondary service hero operates as a service patrol assisting stranded motorists who have flat tires, are out of fuel or are stranded by a mechanical failure of their vehicle. Hero operators are Georgia Department of Transport employees distinguishing the program from freeway service patrols in other states such as California which are operated under contract by private tow truck companies. So since this guy's claiming that he's a hero operator he would have an ID and a badge. I'm assuming the fact that he's claimed he's off duty he's working here in a private capacity for his own business. You don't see it initially but he actually has some passengers in the car with him. And the chief's about to make it blatantly obvious what he thinks he's up to. Okay. Yeah I do for no details. Yeah. So like me, you're impersonating a police officer. Oh, uh, no, sir. I'm not impersonating, sir. You got any ID on you? Yes, yeah, sir. We look in the front. We look in the yeah. front. Yeah. I see red lights. I saw red lights when you pulled out. Yeah, that's right. That's when it activated to the back. Yeah. Where's your ID? Right, yes, Chief. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a lighting permit for the vehicle? Yeah, right down the glass. Okay. Thank you, sir. It works. Be right back with you, okay? Uh, he's got a lighting permit on the. I'm just looking at this, sir. The lighting permits uh, good through December of this year. Hey, Chief, what do you say that cross was where you saw him activate the lights on Lake Ackworth? What's the name of the subdivision here? Lake Ackward Muffler. And he was wanting to turn right out on the 92 in that stream of traffic there. And he turns off okay. the to get out there. Okay, so near Cherokee Street. I'll put that close to a. Uh, Cherokee, yeah, Cherokee, Cherokee, there we go. So that 
is roughly eh, about about 300 feet. He's got front windshield tenant and all windows are right there. His front windshield is a tire tenant. Also, see, got a gun on him too. The thing is, is so he has he has a lighting permit that's valid. What? He has a lighting permit that's valid for the vehicle to have the. Can't have red though. He can't have red or blue, right? That's what I'm curious about. If he has a company that does escorts, I'd have to look back in the law. I don't. I would assume it's amber, amber and white. Right. Um, but at the very least, from what Chief's saying, he's improperly using them. He's not on an escort. Right. He's just trying to cheat his way into traffic. Right. So at the very least, I haven't want improper use of emergency equipment. Um, 300 feet. Down Calvin Road. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. It's just I didn't, you know, Chief didn't get me a, num a number, so I don't know if he was pace pacing him. Huh? I don't think Chief, Chief was uh, pacing him. He didn't tell me exactly how fast he's doing. He's the same flying. But he said 57? Oh, okay. As the officer stated, because the chief has seen him improperly using the emergency equipment, he has him for that. And also going off the conversation there, it would seem that he may have been speeding also. So this officer is going to do his due diligence and have a little look at the law just to see what's going on with this permit that the guy has. Such permit shall be valid for one year from each state and prior the permits of the vehicle be along the federal, state, county, or municipal government agency shall be valid for five years. Any and all official marked law enforcement vehicles specified under 4891 should require to have a permit to use blue lights. Any and all fire department vehicles. You can't have red at all unless, unless you're stationary. Good form. Any and all fire department vehicles which are distinctly marked on each side shall not be required to have a permanent use of red light. Any other ambulance, code defection, and license shall be required to... Any and all ambulances as defined in code section 31112, licensed by the state, shall be required to have a permit for the use of red lights. The commissioner shall the commissioner shall authorize the use of red or amber flashing or revolving lights only when the person or governmental agency shall demonstrate to the commissioner a proven need for equipping a vehicle with emergency lights. Fee for such lights by municipal. Okay, so that says authorize the use of red or amber. So I don't uh, provide it a county municipal agency as defined. Is that an emergency permit? He has a lighting permit, yeah. Um, but I think that's the one he has, because they're different colors, I think. The one he has is that one. You don't have to have a light or a permit for white. Yeah, not white. Amber, you do. And that's what you see, like tow trucks, funeral services, use amber. Now, obviously, stuff like this doesn't come up every day of the week, and it's probably a bit frustrating for the officer due to the fact that the guy actually has a permit, but it's just figuring out if that permit covers the lights that he actually has on his vehicle. But what we do know is most likely he's going to be getting done for improper use of emergency lights. So I wonder would that actually have any implications on him retaining that permit or perhaps getting another one next year? What's the code section for improper use? There's an unauthorized vehicle with red or amber lights, but he has the lighting permit. But I can't tell if that one's only for amber. Yeah, but that's his personal car. It's not like a company call. See, what, but what I was reading in the subsection, it, le it, it, it leaves it kind of open, so it talks about red lights with ambulance and stuff, but then in section subsection B of lighting, the commissioner shall authorize the use of red or flashing revolving lights only when the person, person governmental agency shall demonstrate to the commissioner a proven need for equipping vehicles to lights. So it says person. So he has the lighting permit on the personal vehicle. I understand where the officer is coming from here. The inclusion of the word person in the sentence there makes it kind of open for interpretation. It doesn't specifically state whether it has to be a company vehicle or you can have them on a personal vehicle. This one's a curious one with lights and the lighting permit. Where's he live? Go for him. It's shown off a spindle top. The 8 4. I'd cite that. Okay. We'll turn it over to CID and let them work it a little see more. If there's any, see if there's any yeah. Tom Fool on I, I took a picture of his DOT ID. Okay. And uh, so then nobody answered. 
Gotcha. He's got mag carriers on a belt. Is there, is there... This really feels like that whole scenario I was telling you on TV. So by looking at things here, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to ascertain whether or not the lights that he has on the vehicle are covered by the permit that he has. So the chief said they're going to hand it over to CID and have them look in to see if there's any tomfoolery, as he put it, going on with this permit. He also said that he took a picture of the guy's DOT ID and tried to call up the DOT but nobody answered. But regardless of all that, the chief seems pretty steadfast in his opinion that this guy is a police impersonator. Did he mention what his company name was for the escorts? Yeah, he's it a couple of or, no, I'm sorry, it's Georgia Metropolitan. That's right, it's on his patch. Georgia Metropolitan, or probably Metro Georgia for short, similar to DeWitt Metro State down in Florida. I wonder is that where he's getting his inspiration from? I hope not anyway, because following in those footsteps is only going to lead you to the slammer. So we're going to go and give this guy his citation, but will he take it on the chin, or will he plead for leniency? Alright, Mr. Backy, there's your ID back. Thank you. Look, um... Given with all the light and permit and stuff that I'm seeing, I'm just going to assume everything's properly permitted and stuff for the vehicle. It is, sir. Uh, that said, with what my chief's observation, you know, the use of those are for strictly business purposes. You, no, can't, right. you can't be using it to pull into traffic, okay? Yes, sir. So I am going to issue a citation for unlawful, unlawful operation for emergency vehicle, okay? Just, just here. Just hey, let me just me. talk to the chief real quick before, because I'm telling you how it's going to work. Even though I'm doing this on my private side, once I get this ticket, g is going to grind me again. I'm going to get grinded. And I try to, that's why I try to don't interfere my personal business with G-Dot. Anytime they run off driver's license number, I'm going to get grounded. I'm pleased. I ask the chief, please. I hear, but you have to understand that, that this, whole, this whole scenario is a big issue for us, too, because no, the uniform no, and lights and all that, no, no, this is when it no, gets... The thing is, this is my company. I run my company respectfully. Now you see how he's in a panic here because he doesn't want G-Dot to find out that he's been stopped for improperly using the lights because obviously they'll probably take the permit from him. He also says that they're going to grind me again, which leads me to believe that something like this or something else has happened in the past. He's claiming that he runs his company respectfully, but as the owner of the company, he should be leading by example and shouldn't be doing silly things like this by using his lights improperly. And the officers conveyed their concerns to him about the fact that he has a uniform on, he's in a car with lights on it, he looks very much like a police officer and could be mistaken by members of the public for one. Another thing you may notice, he has one of those police spotlights on the car. Now, why would you need that if you're just doing a funeral escort service? Unless there's something I don't know here and that the people of Georgia actually hold their funerals in the dead of night. Okay, okay because I deal with high clients. This is my uniform. Not no me say officer, nothing. This is my uniform. I got you. You understand? I got but you. please, I just want to talk to the chief. I know you're going to still do your job. I mean no harm. You can okay. check me. My badge number is 440 on the express means. Just, just hear me out. I don't want to get if the, if, the, if the chief wants to argue, that's fine, but this is going to stand. All right? Just let me explain this. What I need you to do is sign here at the X. Signing is not in the mission. I know. I know. Okay. All right. I'm a former police in the Bahamas. I know. Okay. You think because of the fact that he was a former police officer, albeit in a different country, that he'd have a bit more cop on? That was a very bad pun. But you think he'd know that once you've been caught doing something and a citation's been issued, what is the point of arguing on the side of the road about it? I know he's claiming that he might get grinded by the DOT, but he should have thought of that before he started acting the clown with his lights. And I don't know what good speaking to the chief's gonna do because the chief's the one who wanted him pulled over in the first place. If you get pulled over by the police for doing something and they're going to give you any sort of leniency at all, well they're not going to get to the stage of actually writing the citation and handing it to you. Usually when things get to that stage, the ship has sailed. Do you need a pen? There you go. Please, if you if I go. Everything, I point out to everyone else, auto-generated court date right now is showing for the 18th of August at 9 a.m. at our court. The address is right there. On the back of your copy, this phone number right here is to the court services. It takes about three to five business days right, for the citation. Know. Give them a call and they'll explain everything to you. Okay. Do you have any further? Do I have to attend the court? I just can pay it because I really. But once you contact that number, they'll tell you all your options if uh, if you can just pay it outright and, and they'll explain your payment uh, problems. Hey, Chief. Okay. Have you got a business card? Yes, sir. Can I, get, can, can I step out? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
And you're all hot, but what about all these people in there? I know, I know. That's why. the windows for them. Yeah, I'm trying to crack the window right now, Chief. Don't you open all the windows so they don't. No, the thing is, when I ride, when I ride, the air, the agenda, the compressor's going to kick in. Yeah. Chief. Yeah. I'm not trying to be no pain in your hip, but Chief, please, man. I don't want to get grounded. Please, from GDOT. Please. Huh? I beg you, Chief. I get that. I live in the, I live in the community. I live right there on uh, yeah. 3485. I'm not yeah. a bad person. Please, Chief. Not, I beg of you. I don't think you're a bad... Let me have your business card. I don't think you're a bad person. No, I just don't want to get... I don't think get, you're impersonating a police officer. I, well, no, I, I don't want to no, impersonate a police officer, sir. That's why I was careful. I, I present myself on my uniform. Or I'm a former police in the Bahamas. I don't have nothing to, to impersonate for. We need real cops. I know. You could apply. I don't want to, honestly, I don't want to apply for awkward. <laughs> there you go. I, yeah, I don't want to apply for awkward. Yeah, if it's no. hard to find your business card, just uh, what's a good phone number for you, sir? Uh, okay, at any time. All right, thank you very much, sir. All right, unless you have any other questions, you're free to leave. I, yeah. I want to verify your employment, and I'm probably going to have CID look into this, to be honest with you, to see what you're doing. I, I, don't I know, feel, Chief. I don't feel good. Chief, Four is a great Chief I, can show you, I can show you my LLC. I can show you my LLC right now. I'll let, I'll let them handle it. And also, and also right here. Yeah. That's why he was calling my supervisor sure. just now. Sure. Okay. The thing is, anytime, anytime I do this, yeah. they try to involve Judah, and I don't want to get grounded. I hate getting grounded. Yeah. Well, let's don't get grounded. Well, this is this is not us trying to affect your no, appointment. No, no, no. I understand no, your that's concerns, why I but that's why I try. I'm not being honest unless I try to tell. My supervisor is by one two Barnes. Okay. okay. All right. And well, that's fine. that's that's between you and your boss. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, right, we'll do our follow up, but. So I know you're probably wondering now, was he actually legit in the end? Well, the short answer is no. Now, just there at the end of the video, I noticed he actually wasn't saying he doesn't want to get grinded by the DOT. It's he doesn't want to get grounded. So my bad on that one there. So he went on his merry way and the police did their investigations. And about a week later, they issued a warrant for him for impersonating a public officer. 33-year-old Gerardson Mackey was initially cited for unlawful operation of an emergency vehicle, but after further investigation, detectives learned that he hasn't been a hero operator since January when GDOT fired him. Mackey was later charged with impersonating a public officer. And you remember when he was pulled in on the side of the road, they actually tried to ring GDOT but they couldn't get through. So they could have well found out on the side of the road that his ID wasn't valid. Investigators went on to say what he was doing was illegal and dangerous. They said we don't know what he's doing. He could be stopping cars, passing cars, driving recklessly with his lights and putting citizens in danger. Mackey was released on bond and said he never claimed to be a police officer. He wanted to tell his side of the story but needed to talk to his lawyers first apparently. The problem I have here is that if he was fired by GDOT back in January then why is he still carrying the badge around with him when he's out on the road driving around? You have to ask yourself the question why is he driving around with it on him and his ID? And when he was identifying himself to the police when he was initially stopped, he said he was an off-duty hero operator, so he was kind of posing as one of those guys. He's using the term off-duty very loosely there. Off-duty, you mean fired? This guy's permanently off-duty. So it would seem, by the looks of it, this guy hasn't really got a leg to stand on. I can't manage to find out the reason that GDOT sacked him in the first place, and I'm sure that now, because of his improper use of the emergency lights, that that whole lighting permit that he has may be up in the air. So that may in turn have a knock-on effect on his business. I don't know guys, in my opinion here, all the signs point to someone that's trying to impersonate a police officer and the fact that he was a former police officer, I think he's living those nostalgic days of back on the force. I thought it was funny that the chief said that they were actually looking for officers and that he should apply. But I think most of these guys that go around fronting as police officers wouldn't have the courage to put themselves in that position. At the same time, posing as a police officer and pulling other cars over isn't really the safest thing to be doing either. You're eventually going to come across the wrong people and it's going to end very badly. Let's just hope that they manage to stall this guy's ambitions before he becomes a danger to himself or somebody else. At the start of the video you may recall me mentioning Jeremy DeWitt of Metro State fame. Yes, Florida's serial police impersonator. DeWitt was sentenced last September to 18 months in prison with credit for 110 days served as part of a plea deal covering 10 cases against him in Orange County, Florida for impersonating an officer and other related charges. 
DeWitt was due for release on the 10th of September this year so that means by the time you're looking at this video he should be out already. He now faces 4 years of supervised probation and he's required to wear an ankle monitor and he will have his driver's license suspended for 6 months from the time of his release. Under the plea agreement he cannot possess guns or any other equipment or rings of law enforcement including vehicles and uniforms. DeWitt's activity goes all the way back 2 decades to 2003 when he first served a year in prison time for impersonating an officer. But of course he claims all the charges against him have been set up and that he's innocent of cop impersonation impersonation and of fooling scores of innocent motorists and placing the public in jeopardy. In 2018, as he was being handcuffed and arrested by sheriff's deputies, he told WFTV Channel 9 that he was being targeted by the police and harassed. We only do funeral escorts, he yelled, and these guys have been harassing us. Only funeral escorts of dead family members and women and children that need our help. A study carried out by the American Journal of Criminal Justice noted that police impersonation crimes can shake the public's confidence in law enforcement, particularly if victims believe that the event was a legitimate police action undertaken by a corrupt cop. It's really important that people like this get taken off the streets and they get stopped from doing this in the future. I don't think this guy's going to be doing too much as his company that he was running is now defunct. And the fact that most of the conditions attached to his release mean that he won't be able to do the same thing he was doing. Now I know some of you guys may have seen some of Jeremy DeWitt's videos but if you'd like me to take a look at some of them and make a couple of videos about them do let me know down below in the comments. Another interesting point to note about this guy is he actually made an appearance on Dr. Phil in order to try prove his innocence. On the show he underwent a polygraph test and he was asked three questions. He was asked if he knowingly misused his funeral escort rights to appear as someone empowered by law enforcement to which he answered no. He was asked if he falsely presented himself to a citizen as someone empowered by law enforcement to which he answered no. And finally asked if during the course of his funeral escort duties had he knowingly used authority exclusively given to law enforcement officers, the writ once again responded no. The polygraph expert's opinion was that Jeremy Charles DeWitt was being deceptive, but DeWitt protested this and said he knew he wasn't lying or being deceptive. So we'll have to keep an eye out and see does this guy keep himself out of trouble? Well guys that's just about all we have time for on this video but I hope you'll join me again very soon for another video and if you did enjoy this video don't forget to drop us a like as it does really help the channel out. If you'd like to support what we do here at Degenerate Watch you can check out the links down below in the description to do just that. Don't forget to check out our blog over on Coffee, and our merch store still has the 20% off sale so get over there and check out what we have on offer. We should have a live stream on the channel either this Friday or Saturday night where once again the same as last week we'll be going over some news stories that have caught my eye during the week. And I'll post more details about when we're going to be having that live stream on the community tab in the coming days. As always I want to give a big shout out to the Premiere squad that are joining me live for this video as a Premieres. Thank you very much for joining me. And a big thank you to all our channel moderators. And of course no video will be complete without a massive shout out to our channel members. I appreciate you all and thank you so much for your continued support and encouragement. And if anybody wants to find out more information about channel memberships you can check out the link down below in the description or hit the join button down below this video. Once again I want to thank you guys for joining me, I hope to see you all very soon for another video here on Degenerate Watch. I'm going to leave a couple of links down below in the description to some of our most recent videos, so if you haven't seen those, don't forget to check those out. I hope all you guys out there have a fantastic day. Until next time, stay safe, take care, peace. Totally new yet authentic recording. Fantastic.